Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 117, and the name is RFID Lab. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This looks like the 7941W dual frequency RFID module, some resistors and some mounting hardware. This looks like the TFT Color 170 by 320 display module. Here we've got some RFID cards. Here we've got some rubber standoff feet. Here we've got a NFC PCB dog tag and the cool logo there. It's a little rubber piece, the protector for the dog tag. And we've got the chain for the dog tag. Here we've got a two channel logic level shifter. Here we've got our RP2040-0 development board. And here we've got our RFID Lab printed circuit board. Whoops, I also forgot to mention these two additional RFID cards right here. And here we've got our exclusive sticker sheet with all kinds of fun stuff on it. And this time I didn't miss the Rush references. And last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 117 collectible reference card. We've got an image of the 7941W module on this side. And on this side, we've got the pinouts for our RP2040-0 dev board. Just like they always do, the folks from HackerBoxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the HackerBox, you might find it pretty handy. All right, so the first thing I did was plugged up my 2040 dev board here. And according to the instructable, when we do that, it should pop up with a storage device. And you can see that popped up right here. So that's working as expected and is a good basic test for our 2040 board. All right, assuming you've got the Arduino IDE already installed, the next thing we're gonna do is install support for this board. And we're gonna go to the board manager and search for and install the Arduino Embed OS RP2040, just like this. You click that install button right there. When I got these pop-ups, I just hit install. Next, you want to go to Tools, Board, Arduino Embed OS RP2040 Boards, and then pick the Raspberry Pi Pico. And then after that, you want to pick the port that lines up with what popped in when you plugged up your USB for this. And you can see in my case here, it was this UF2 board. Next, the Instructable advises us to use our library manager and search for Adafruit NeoPixel. You can see here, I've already got that installed, so I don't have an install button, but I do have an update button. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the update here. Next, the Instructable tells us to grab this sketch right here that I'm about to click on. And get that, we open it up in Arduino. And then I'm gonna push it to the board, or at least I'm gonna try to. And this brings me back to this note here that was an Instructable. It said the latest version was 115, one, as you see here, but it says uh, there might be some issues. So they recommend going with 1.150 instead. So. I back my NeoPixel library back down to that and then send it again. This time it compiled okay and we can see that the onboard RGB LED on the 2040 dev board is cycling through colors as expected. The first thing it tells us to do is put our five one mega ohm SMD 1206 resistors on here. And as I've done before, what you'll see me do here is I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on just one side of each of these positions for these resistors. And then I'm gonna come back and use some tweezers and hold the resistor in place as I heat up the existing solder ball and kind of let that fall down into there for each one. And then I'll come back around and do the opposite side. And sometimes I will go back and add a little solder or heat up the first side. And 
Next, the instructable tells us to trim the five wires from the JST pigtail to about 17 millimeters. Now, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and making a good guess about how much I want to have here. And then I use my cutters there and cut those off. Then I'll use these little quick strippers. I'll put a link in the description if you want to see what those were. And then I tin each little end of all of these wires right here. Then basically I stick them in there and get them soldered into place. The last one here, for whatever reason, ended up kind of tacking it from the top. And then once those are in there, you're good to go. Next, the 2040 dev board goes in. Just stick those supplied headers in the board and then stick the board right there on top of it and then just solder all those down into place and we'll kind of secure it and flip the board over and then we just catch the other side next we put some header pins down for the level shifter and make sure that the three volt hole on the level shifter is going to the three volt mark pin there on the board and then get that soldered into place. I got a little bit out of order here and installed the little standoff things that will hold the RFID module in place. And I'll go ahead and actually stick the RFID module in place. Continuing with my out of order process here, I will go ahead and stick all these bumpers on the bottom. Then I finally get around to putting the headers for the display and popping the display on top using a little blue tag here and soldering all that into place. Next, the instructable tells us to grab this Adafruit ST7735 and ST7789 library from the library manager within arduino so i just search for that and you can see i've already got that installed if i didn't that remove button would say install so that's what you need to do there and then it says also go into the library manager and look for this touchy touch library and you can see there i don't have that one so i'm going to hit install and that's what you should do too and that'll install the touchy touch library and that's what allows those little touch pads to work that are on the pcb Next, you're going to download this HB RFID demo sketch and get that opened up inside Arduino. And then I had to remember to plug the thing back up so I could push the code to it. And then I did push the code to it. And when that finishes, we can flip back over here and see what we're dealing with. You can see we got this cool splash screen and then it eventually boots up into this cool menu here. I had a card here on the bench. I wanted to see if it would work from an old job from 20 years ago. And I tried it 125 and 13.5 and it would not read this one. And then I tried reading one of the supplied 13 megahertz ones and that worked just fine. And then I tried one of the other cards that must have been one of the 125 kilohertz ones and it didn't work. And I should have probably marked these to begin with so I'd know which ones were which so I didn't get them messed up. I recommend doing that if you're playing around with these. Anyway, no matter what I tried on these, I couldn't read them, and I thought something was wrong. But, if you go and look, clues will kind of tell you, like, these don't come with a random address on them. And it's always good, you can look at the comments on the Instructable as well. You'll see folks in there saying that there's not a value in there. You have to write something before those will work. I tried another fob I had been playing with that I knew had a good address on it. And that did read successfully. So I knew the 125 kilohertz side was fine at that point. So then what I did was read in my fob again. Then I held up a blank card from the hacker box and hit the up arrow here. So it would write that value to the blank card. Then you'll see I go back in the menu here and I'll go back to read. And when I read it, you just have to take my word for it. It's successful this time instead of saying failed. And I've got the same ID that I have on my fob. So that worked just perfectly. 
After that, I did spend a little bit of time trying to have a little proof of concept to show y'all, like, you know, a real, real rudimentary, like, access control thing with a little small database on the 2040, and, like, you could enroll and then, like, you know, present, like, a pass or not and give a green light. But, you know, you could extend that to, like, doing a relay or actually pulling a mag lock or something. But, uh, I, you know, I ran out of time, and I'm trying to catch up. As you know, if you're watching this, I'm a good bit behind on my hacker boxes, so... I had to leave that alone, but if anybody else did anything cool with it, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to check it out. All right, the last thing we're going to show here is using this WAC Dev or Wake Dev app I've got on my Android phone. And I'm going to show you here how I can read that NFC and then write back a value. You can do URLs or contacts or whatever. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can check out that app and see what you think. But I'm just going to do like a test one, two, three. And you'll see here, I'm going to write that to the NFC on the dog tag here. And then after I write it, you'll see that I can read it right back. So that's pretty cool. You can do lots of other neat stuff with that. So this is one that I really enjoy. Several years and what seems like a lifetime ago, I actually did a good bit of work and research into RFID security. I was especially interested in research others have been doing that proposed potential security risk for the then new RFID enabled US passports, which might make US people abroad possible targets for semi smart IED type things. What Hackerboxes has given us in this box is a lot more approachable and a lot more affordable than the TI div kit stuff I had to deal with back in the day, so that's much better these days. It looks like we're going to have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hackerboxes have graciously offered to send a Hackerbox117 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on October 11th, 2025. And remember, Hackerboxes only ships to U.S. addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a U.S. shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still Hackerbox117s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway and want to get one, check them out or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.